Open Your Eyes is brought to you by the Belize Bank, our country, your bank. Welcome to Open Your Eyes. Start your morning right. I am John Palacio. And I'm Marlene Cuellar. And thank you for joining us this morning. It is a lovely Wednesday morning, Marlene. It's hump day already. <laughs> Just like that. And you know when we say that, we mean it's a lovely day. Yeah. <laughs> but nonetheless, we've got the professionals on the line. Miss Young is on the line. Good morning, Shania. Good morning. How are you today? I am good. All right. Let's talk about our weather yes. then. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening today? So many fair um, weather conditions are expected to prevail over the area. Okay. And in the 24 hours forecast, skies will be sunny with a few cloudy spells today and partly cloudy tonight for only isolated showers. Mm. And our winds? And the winds will be from the east and northeast at 5 to 15 knots and sea state will be moderate. Okay. Uh, is it safe for people to head out to sea? Yes. Um, we don't have a car shun right now, and then the seas have died down a bit to um, between four to six feet. Okay. And what about the high temperatures? They're creeping up, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, high temperatures today along the coast will be 84 degrees Fahrenheit, 88 inland, and 7 to 6 um, in the hills. And low temperatures tonight will be 7 to 6 degrees Fahrenheit along the coast, 68 inland, and 6 to 6 in the mountains. Mm hmm. And any changes in the next few days? Um, only going to become more drier and um, warmer. <laughs> um, so mainly fair, warm and dry conditions are expected on Thursday and Thursday night. All right. Well, that's a very straightforward update for yeah. today. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for uh, keeping us up to date. You're welcome. All right. Have a great day. You too. Okay. Yeah, there you go. You, there you have it. Uh, conditions becoming uh, much more drier. Warmer, warmer and drier. Yeah, yeah, those are the two, two, uh, the two words to look forward to, warmer and drier. But nonetheless, we're in a lovely country. We've got, a beautiful, we've got beauty all over. And uh, if you're feeling you, you, know, you need that, that time to just you know, look around, try to do it. It's very important that you do so. All right. All We're right. going to keep things moving this morning with our eye opener, a little bit of motivation to get you started. All right. And today's eye opener, taken from dailyom.com, goes like this. Approaching life with an open heart means that we have opened the door to greater consciousness. To some degree, approaching life with an open heart is as simple as shifting your attention onto your heart. Eventually, you will be able to do this anytime, any place. But at first, it may help to try it in a quiet place where you won't be disturbed. Simply sit with your eyes closed and draw your breath into your heart. As your breath expands your chest cavity, your heart expands and opens. You may feel tenderness or sadness in your heart. You may also feel relief. Any emotions that arise can be effectively witnessed and healed through the meditation process, which benefits both your physical heart and your energetic heart. The more you practice, the more you will find your heart opening to your own presence and to all the situations your life brings. When we open our hearts, they may feel tender and vulnerable, which simply means that they need our loving attention as we cleanse and heal them of past hurts and blockages. This process asks us to practice some of the heart's greatest lessons, patience, compassion, and unconditional love. On the other hand, we may take up res residence as effortlessly as a bird returns to its nest. Either way, approaching life with an open heart simply means turning to our true home. Oh my God, that is so beautiful, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but um, we definitely could. Uh, it, it resonates with us. Uh, one of the parts that I that I found 
a little hard. You know, approaching life with an open heart means that we have opened the door to a greater consciousness. Eventually, we'll be able to do this anytime, any place. But at first, it may help to try to be a, in a quiet place. What you know, it, when I listen to it, I think about man. It could be hard for some folks, yeah. especially uh, you know, the lifestyle they live or. They live in an area where things are always, always attacking them, or it seems that way. So why would I want to open my heart? Why would I want to? Uh, uh, why would I want to, to 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 let loose? To think about things? I always have to be on the defense. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, or on the other hand, we may take up residence effortlessly as a bird returns to its nest. Either way, approaching life with an open heart simply means returning to our true home. It gives us the ability to to think. When you're in your true home, it, you, you feel extremely safe. Mm -hmm. You feel that I've got the time to, uh, to think about things and make some proper decisions and feel lighter because I've made the right choice. I really and truly love this eye-opener, and I think it's definitely a way of life people should start to live. Yeah. You know, I think the idea of, of being open is one that, that sometimes we can struggle with. Yeah. There's some things that we're more open to, and there's some things that we're very closed off to. Very yeah. often, if we don't agree with something, don't understand something, um, then we tend to be closed. Yeah. What I love about the eye opener, it kind of gives you just a breathing practice to get you to that space. It starts with, you know, uh, taking deep breaths, opening up your heart, mm -hmm. your chest, and uh, the feeling that you get just from that. And it, it's just a matter of being able to tap into your true feelings because there's what your mind is saying and yeah. man our mind goes all the time sometimes all different directions but how many times do we check in on how we actually feel about something and yeah. are we being open about it yeah. um and I, and I think that that's always something that is worthwhile to invest your time in yeah. it's not easy it comes with practice as the eye opener is saying um, but, you know, we, we have to check ourselves sometimes. Definitely. I love the fact that you uh, said it comes with practice. Because, yeah. indeed, everything that we do, there must be a practice session or some sessions to it. Some things, some thing, sometimes some things are sprung upon you, but at the same time, you've had the conversation already. Mm -hmm. So it comes to mind that, you know what, I know this, and I will continue to ride it out as long as it, as long as it uh, remains with me. But you're totally right practice these things and sometimes you really need to uh, get back to return to actually return to your true home it's a very safe place to be yeah yeah. All right. I really like it, Marlene. All right, really. so that's our eye opener for this morning. Yep, definitely. But I'll tell you what, while we continue on with this morning's program, uh, we're about to step on in now to our morning tea. It is a time of the morning whereby we put some hot water, we get some uh, nice tea, we stir it up, and we share it with you because we want for you to share it with your friends. So check this out. For the morning tea this morning, social media and professional space spaces or purpose, uh, where should we draw the line or should we get used to changed communication for professionals? <laughs> you know, you know, it, it, I, it, it stirs me, it stirs me up uh, and I'll tell you why because, and, and for me, I'm not big on the whole social media realm. I, I, and I guess I'm a old schooler, some people might say that, but at the same time, it has its pros and cons. It doesn't matter what strand you're pulling out. There, is a, there are always pros and cons to things. But for professional purposes, especially in the light of the entire aviation situation that's going on, you must have professional communication yeah. devices. Yeah. We can't use WhatsApp to tell you, I, 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 I. for family, I understand. Like Marlene, you know, we're friends, we're friends. I tell you, Mar, hey, I'm in Cancun, this is my position. But at the same time, if we're going there on work purpose, where are we going to link? Yeah. We're going to link to our devices here at work. That is what we do because it's a professional space. Yeah. And that's how I feel about that. Yeah. No, I, I think it's a complex issue. And is. I think that um, it depends on the perspective that you use. If we talk about what we, was revealed yesterday in the preliminary investigations um, in the helicopter crash, everybody's talking about WhatsApp this morning. Everybody's raising an eyebrow over yeah. the fact uh, that these men went on a mission and uh, used WhatsApp as a form of communication to check in with their base. And, and the Minister of National Security giving everybody a WhatsApp lesson on, on, on television was just strange. Yeah. But I agree with you 100%. I think that 
it is very clear that there should be a form of communication beyond using a external messaging system. Yeah. Um, that is just, it, it seems so, uh, it seems to be common sense, for lack of a better term. I think if we all understand that you, you're not allowed to text while you drive. You're not allowed to, to use your phones when you drive because it's distracting. It is. It, that's the primary reason why. Yeah. And it's distracting to you in the vehicle that you're in, and it's distracting because it can make you cause harm on others. So why would this be any different in that situation? The, the question I think that I have is, is looking at this. It's fine having, I mean, everyone has their WhatsApp groups of work, or you have a functionality uh, where social media or WhatsApp or other communicating messages can supplement or enhance your work, but it doesn't take away from the core of it. The yeah. core requires your essentials. Yeah. So once you, you know, you're not going to run an office on WhatsApp. You're going to have a landline or you're going to have a phone for communication. communication device, the WhatsApp will thing. help. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. As much as you may have a WhatsApp group, trust me, when there's a serious uh, message to go out, there's going to be an email that goes out confirming that that is there. Yeah. Yeah. So you have all these processes in place and these can help. Should they be the main means of communication? Probably not. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't shy away from the way the world is working, but I think the two separate things. If you're talking what's happening in an office space or in a different type of business, yes. But when we're talking about the aviation issue, that's a whole other, other ball game. And uh, the helicopter crash, I just I cannot understand. You know, I went back to that conversation that we had with Major Jones, who spoke of uh, any, any flight crew that goes out once the command comes from the commander. And he spoke of the written protocol that would go out, that would outline the details mm -hmm. of what the mission would be, the times for the radio checks that would take place. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't hear any of that yesterday. No. And it is very clear that this mission was uh, handed down directly from the Joint Intelligence Committee mm -hmm. um, rather than the commander himself. Now, why didn't the commander say, well, there's a protocol as to how you do this or, you know, what time are, are you going to do X, Y, and Z? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Perhaps yeah. it was just one of those things, you know, your boss tell you, by step you and te tell some, your, your employee um, or your subordinate to do something, they do yeah. it, you know? So, you know, there's so many, there's so many things to get out of it. And, I, and I, I'm, I've got one final uh, point to it. One of the things that came out of yesterday's press conference was the fact that the general mentioned that uh, they've submitted for, yeah. you know, requests for these communication devices. And the question was asked, uh, anything happen? And he said, I answered the question already. You know, simply means that nothing happened. But I don't think the, question, the answer was very clear because what he, did, he didn't say that if there was no radio radio system. Mm -hmm. Are you saying that every single one of the aviation vessels that we have in the BDF don't have and radio command or yeah. that helicopter didn't yeah. have or they had it and it wasn't working yeah. or they had it and they were told not to use it. Mm -hmm. Those are all clarifications that weren't necessarily made and they're, they're yeah. all very different. But we hear this all the time. We you know, it. when we talk with uh, the commissioner of police, and we've been battling this crime situation for so long. Mm -hmm. He speaks of not being able to get additional things, resources. Yeah, yeah. And you need your tools, you need your resources. That's just how it works. <laughs> that, that, that is. But for professional places, one of the things yeah. that they do is try to, they try to be on top notch, especially if it's in the communication aspect. Yeah. You know, so there are so many things that, that, that we could actually uh, discuss when it comes to this. But join us on your social media yeah. podcast. It'll tell, tell us, us exactly you how you feel, yeah, what you think. And let, let us start your conversation for the morning. And I think it's a very good conversation for the morning because everybody needs to chime in. It doesn't matter if the situation right now, but communication is the key especially within your family and friends. That's right. That's how I feel. So that's our morning tea for this morning. Wow, that was a serious cup of tea, yeah. that much I could tell you. Uh, and of course, we move on for this morning. We've got three wonderful segments lined up. As a matter of fact, in with us for the first segment, we'll be discussing with representatives of the Ministry of Health on uh, the washing, actually hand-washing practices and safety 
precautions. That's right. Of course, we are still uh, on the lookout and, and being very cautious about the situation of COVID-19 mm -hmm. or the new coronavirus. And so we're going to go back to some of the precautions uh, that we can all take to protect ourselves and protect our families. Mm -hmm. In our second segment for this morning, we will be talking about water. World Water Day Committee will be sitting in with us to discuss World Water Day activities. And then we're closing off with the details with the upcoming LeaderCast 2020. And the theme for this year is going to be positive disruption. Oh, so we're good. looking forward to that positive <laughs> disruption at the end of our show. But we got to go ahead and take a break. But before we do that, we want to say a big, big, big happy birthday to none other than Beverly Jones. Beverly, happy birthday to you. And of Excellent. course, it comes from all of us here at Channel 5 and all of us right here on Open Your Eyes. I also want to send a happy birthday shout out to my nephew wow. as well, Luca <laughs> Martinez. Hope you have a great day today to enjoy. No, definitely. With, yeah, we, we, before we take that break, we met Luca during the Christmas program. That's right. Good buddy of mine. <laughs> but we need to take that break. And when we come back, we'll be getting things started. Stay with us. Yeah. Over 100 years of service excellence in Belize, the Belize Bank Limited.
And welcome back to Open Your Eyes on this cool Wednesday morning. Now we've got three wonderful segments lined up for you. We're about to move on into our first one and representatives of the Ministry of Health on washing, on hand washing practices and safety precautions. We've got the pros in to tell us all about it. As a matter of fact, in with us, we've got Tiffany Rayburn, who is the infection control nurse at Central Health Region, and Shedrak Ariola, health educator at Central Health Region. Yes. Guys, good morning and welcome. Good morning. Good morning. morning. And I must good say, morning. it's nice to have you in. I'll tell you why. <laughs> Everybody freed. Everybody is afraid. And, you know, um, we, we need to get into the practices, but the coronavirus is definitely something folks are reckoning with, COVID-19. And uh, people want to know how they could stay away from it and the practices or the best practices so yeah. they're not able to contract this disease. Let's talk about COVID-19 on a whole. What is COVID-19? Signs and symptoms. Hi, good morning. Um, well, the COVID-19, or better known as coronavirus, mm -hmm. It's just an ex-respiratory um, infection, mm -hmm. all right? Another coronavirus um, out of the family of coronavirus okay. yeah. that affect our respiratory system right. and also affect our lungs, right? Which can lead to um, further complication yeah. depending on the individual. Yeah. So that's the basic information we normally try to inform people about. It's just another respiratory infection. One a little bit more serious, mm -hmm. but one which can lead to further complication, especially if we don't seek yeah. medical assistance as soon as possible, mm -hmm. as soon as the signs and symptoms start to show. Right? Or if we have travel yeah. to an area where there's outbreak yeah. and then you start to show signs and symptoms, it's best to try to reach out to one of the medical hospital clinics mm -hmm. yeah. so that you can you be looked at as a yeah. doctor. You know, and I'm glad you said uh, that there is a family of coronaviruses yeah. because, you know, we, we've all seen people questioning about, well, why does the Dettol talk about coronavirus if this is new? Yes. Um, can you explain it for us so we, we understand it clearly? Well, um, as I mentioned, there's a family of coronavirus. So um, some of the common cold that you catch are so far under the family, but of course, those are not um, as. Um, serious, not serious as this one. Mm -hmm. We also had um, SARS, SARS mm -hmm. in 2003, which yeah. also fell under the coronavirus family. And then we had MERS in 2012, mm -hmm. 2012. Yes. Okay, which also fell under the coronavirus mm -hmm. family. And now in 2019, mm -hmm. now we have COVID-19 COVID that also fell under that same coronavirus family. So it's so, like flu, where you have many different types of flu. You could have yeah. different types of coronavirus. Yes. Mm -hmm. But this one is new. Yes, this one is... A never strain. been in human before. Yes, wow. never been in human before. Okay. Now, let's talk about the symptoms. What would this new coronavirus do to you that you may experience? What kind of symptoms would you experience? Well, the symptoms is um, similar, just like the regular flu that you have. So it's very hard for you to determine that, um, you've got the, that you have that you've got COVID-19, COVID right? Yeah. So we have the same um, sore throat. Mm -hmm. You have um, cough, but this, with this cough, it's more dry cough. Um, some fever mm -hmm. is also some of those signs. Um, so right now, for example, in Belize, sometimes we have people calling and says, hey, I, I think I have the coronavirus or I have COVID-19 because mm -hmm. they are displaying some of those signs yeah. and symptoms. Mm -hmm. But what we try to explain to them, the public is that right now we don't have any um, COVID-19 or any coronavirus um, here in Belize. Mm -hmm. um, so more likely it's just a regular flu, but we still, of course, encourage them to visit the clinic and mm -hmm. um, Get try to see. Yes, see a doctor. And so the doctor can then give prescription in respect to mm -hmm. that illness that they probably have. So, yeah. so the um, symptoms is pretty similar. And also with this, remember, you have to have a travel history. Yeah. I mean, it's not just, just having the cough and the cold and mm -hmm. that. You have to have come in contact with somebody that have yeah. been somewhere where this um, virus yes. was. So mm -hmm. it's not just having a cough and cold. You won't just test everybody with a cough and cold. Yeah. Mm. yeah. No. So it's key to know that the symptoms may look a lot like a regular cold or yeah. flu, flu that we may have. And yes. so especially the three that you're looking out for is that fever, that dry cough, oh. 
and the you have to have the travel history. Yeah, the sort of, and then you have a history the of history, yeah. being in contact, contact with people or in a place, place where, where the virus yeah. has been detected. detected. Yeah, exactly. That's right. Exactly. You know what's strange though is that especially with with with, uh, with the flu is that you might get the sore throat first. The cough comes afterwards. After. So at what point? So as long as you're feeling you're, you're getting a sore throat, normally you start feel all brit all brucked up, you know, you, you, you wonder about things like that. So at that point, or as long as I start to feel that I've got a sore throat, is when I should go into the clinic. Well, right now, we, right now is the flu season, right? Yes. So a lot oh, of we're in a flu yeah, season. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right all now right. is the flu season. So um, a lot of folks season. are coming down with the flu. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, being transmitted from person to person within family within school. Um, so of course we want to encourage them to try to seek some type of medical attention as soon as possible. I know you talk about the different, um, in respect to how the symptoms come about on person, but each person different. Will, is different, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you might um, catch the flu and one symptom come ahead of the other, while with uh, Miss Marlene, another symptom might be yeah. um, first, right? So. Um, the very important thing is that once you feel very ill, definitely want to seek medical attention. Do not go to school, do not go to work. Right. Try to seek uh, medical attention so that a doctor can look over you. Okay. Now we're still learning new things about COVID-19 every day because it is a new disease. Um, but what we do know is that 60% of the people who get it fare off fine, mm -hmm. right? So what does that mean? Like. I mean, I had a sore throat a few weeks ago. I'm thinking now maybe those were the symptoms and I had it and I just got rid yeah. of it. I mean, wh what are we talking about when you say 60% uh, are, are, don't develop a severe illness? Is it that they don't go to the hospital, require hospitalization? It's just that with this virus, with this COVID-2019, I mean, we are hearing about the deaths and we're not hearing about the recoveries mm. and and it's not that everybody that gets the COVID-19 will die well, I mean well, they, yeah. they have been much more, more recovery than than deaths mm -hmm. yeah so um, like everything else it's just this how it, it affects the individual and it is saying that yeah. it's affecting more the elderly yeah. and those with co-infection meaning yeah. that you know people who are hypertensive diabetics mm. and so so the children for whatever reason this virus is Stay that away. interested, yeah. really Which, interested in the children? That's interesting, that right? Because in the flu, the flu can be really devastating to oh, children. The children. Yeah. Yes. But this new virus doesn't seem to, to affect them very much. And I'm wrong. I didn't mean 60%. 60,000 out of, out of the 100,000. 100, okay. um, those, those are two different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's... So we know that not everybody who gets it are going to end up yeah. in a hospital. Who are the people who are most vulnerable, who may end up in a hospital or lose their lives? As we said before, the, 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 elderly, the elderly population, that is what, you know, the other areas that have had cases is showing that it is the elderly population and those that have, have the um, underlying conditions mm. are the ones that, you know, get it severely and more likely to die. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. And they would develop, like, what, pneumonia? Ne or? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so with all that said, it still means that we don't want to get it ourselves, even if it's mild, because we don't want to pass it yes. on to loved ones, um, and we also don't want to have it spreading Small. around the yeah. country. You exactly. said something interesting. You said that we are in the flu season and we are seeing the flu. flu. What does this say about our hygiene practices? <laughs> Unfortunately, that is something, you know, I mean, we, we have problems even in our healthcare, yeah. Yeah. in our healthcare setting that we don't see the importance of hand washing. Yeah. And that is the key to any, any, any infection. I mean, our main part, we are spreading our germs through, through our hands, our hands. Yeah. because we do so much with our hands. So, yeah. you know, as long as we perform our hand washing, we could cut down, I believe, to like 90% or so if we, if we would just yeah. simply do hand hygiene. Yeah. And it does, yeah. it does take uh, uh, some practice because I'll tell you what, if something itch your face right now, the first thing you want to do is itch. to, that's yeah. the first instinct, that's the first yeah. thing you want to do. So it comes with some practice. Now from, from the ministry, are, are, we, are we going out to talk about this and how to uh, properly wash our hands and how to even practice not to touch our face? 
This is some, I mean, hand hygiene is something that we, we tend to go out to do, uh, especially in the schools. Yeah. Yeah. We do it a lot on a routine, routine basis outside of COVID-19 is something, yeah. that, you know, the health educators, they go out and do on a regular basis to the schools, teaching the kids how to properly wash, wash. their hands. Mm -hmm. So, it's a, you know, it's a practice that as Ministry of Health that we try to, to put out mm -hmm. there on a regular basis, especially, as I said, to the, to the um, children, because they are the ones that tend to like to share things and, you know, yeah. put their hands in their mouth and stuff like that. But for this um, COVID-19, we have been out to different mm -hmm. areas. We have a lot of business places that have asked for us, you know, to come out and share the information with them. Yeah. We have been to BL, we have been to um, WASA, we have been to um, um, DFC, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and then we have, we have other areas uh, coming yes, this coming week. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that have us. So we're talking about preparing in the event that there's a case here or protecting ourselves more so. So let's go through the steps. We know one is hand washing. What else should we be doing or not doing? You need, if you have cough, cold, you need to cough in your, cough in your, Palm, yeah, in your yeah, elbow. Yeah. Use a you tissue. You don't want to use your hands. Don't use your hands because, again, as I said, you sneeze in your hand, you go pick up your phone. Touch, touch the desk, yeah. you know, somebody comes behind you, t need to make a phone call, pick up that phone, that phone, gun with whatever you just, you know, sneeze in your hand. Yeah. So you need to make sure, you know, proper cough etiquette, as I said, cough in your sleeve, use a tissue. Okay. We don't advise to use rags because then again, you I know, use that uh, rag over and over, over and over. Oh, yes, yeah, yes. 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 So it's we like don't a little germ machine, you put it exactly. down. Exactly. Pick, mm -hmm. pick it up back. Just wipe this yeah. corner. Mm. Yeah. Else, we also advise yes. that you so use a disposable use tissue. disposable tissue. Use so a tissue just one time and, and throw dispose. it away. Okay. And perform hand hand hygiene. Use okay. the sanitizer to sanitize your hand after. So you really want to get used to doing that elbow. Oh, elbow. elbow. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Right. Cool. So we had the proper hand washing. The other thing is don't touch. Touch. Your feet. Limit. Yes. Limit don't your feet. This is perhaps I think. Touch. I think this is harder than hand washing. Oh. Yes. This one is hard. Yes. I yes. always ask people if you ever think about sit up, sit and think about the amount of time they touch their face compared to the amount of time they actually sanitize or wash yeah. their hands. Yeah. Yeah. And if you sit down and you think about that, oh, it's a lot. man, it is a lot. Yeah. So what it is is that maybe, maybe. There's a germ here. Mm -hmm. I touched this. Touch John, maybe. He has it on him. Brought it from his house with his sick children. children yeah. <laughs> and I touch my eye, and yeah. it goes into my eye. Touch my nose or my mouth, and I introduce it's, that yeah. into my body. Yeah. yeah. So that's what it is. That's, that's what basically. it is, basically. Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah. So what? those are the three main entry points that, mm -hmm. most, that germs yeah, enter our body. Membranes, mm -hmm. yeah. Before we get to washing hands, because that's where we're going in just a few, um, you, did mention, uh, you did mention hand sanitizer, but are we using it properly? Uh, you just use hand sanitizer and done? Well, we're going to get it. to that stuff, yeah. but I actually want to go back to something else. Okay. So we said uh, hand washing, don't touch your face. Mm -hmm. Uh, the cough. The proper cough, cough and cough, sneeze yeah. etiquette. Uh -huh. Social distancing. Social. Yes. This is key. And, and um, you know, it's funny. I've met people over the past couple of days. I've been trying to remind myself not to hug oh, them yeah. and kiss on the cheek. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's, a ha it's a really hard habit mm -hmm. to break. Yeah. But this is actually a time where we should kind of keep Try our practice, space. Yeah. Explain to us why. Because, again, it's a droplet contact pre um, precaution. Yeah. yeah. So... You know, we say three feet because more or less that's the distance where if you cough or sneeze, where your droplet will drop. Yeah. You know, so the farther you three are, feet. the bit, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Is the distance we should be. Okay. You should be maintaining. Yeah. Try not to have too close, too close contact, contact with people. Yeah. Um, and if you're sick, this is always a tough one. Parents have a sick child, they don't have a babysitter, it's just a little cough and cold, yes, they, they send them to, to school. school. Mm -hmm. Some of us feel like the workplace will shut down if we don't go to work, so we <laughs> yes. feel terrible, but we still go to work. Exactly. <laughs> What's your advice there? Stay at Stay home. At home. <laughs> well, definitely, because that's how the germs keep spreading, spread right? That's mm -hmm. right? So it spread very easily. So it can easily be contained if someone is very ill and they remain at home, they go mm -hmm. to the doctor's see medication and remain at home for a couple of days okay. until they start to feel well. As you rightfully mentioned, when someone, um, our hands are all over the place, we'll touch all, 
um, different counter, yeah. door knob. Yeah. And so um, we generally pass um, germs, um, as Ms. Marilyn mentioned, greeting friends, greeting colleagues, you know, with hug. Yeah. Shake hands. You shake hands. Shake hands. You understand? Yeah. All of those, we are transmitting yeah. more than just the <laughs> love and that, um, and being social, yeah. we are also transmitting germs. So we just have to be very mindful of, of that, right? Very Especially yeah. in this time, now seeing that it's a much more serious mm -hmm. illness that we have to deal with. Yeah. It's the same thing to prevent the influenza, um, if, um, prevent the flu, cold and cough, but with this now we have to take even extra precaution because of the seriousness of it, right? Yeah. How important is it to clean some of these common surfaces? And how do you do that? It is important. Normally, a virus does not live outside. Okay. A virus need a host, need body to survive. Yeah. But for some reason, they're saying that this one can last from six hours to nine days. Okay. So this, this, right this strain is really any... out of the ordinary. Okay. So it's very important that we do surface high touch areas that we try to clean those areas as often as possible. Okay. We're saying we that use? you could use Clorox, you, Clorox wipes, Clorox solution, a Lysol. Clorox mixture. Okay. Lysol. Still have my reservations about Lysol. <laughs> <but> yeah. <still. laughs> I believe the Clorox. Clorox For us, we, we, are, we, we, you know, we are, we're insisting okay. on the, um, okay. the Clorox wipe or the Clorox, a Clorox And mixture. Clorox is cheaper than, the, is than very the disinfectant cheap. Exactly. sprays. Yes. Yeah. 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 Very much. Because actually disinfectant sprays, you're supposed to spray them till the surface is so wet. Yeah and then leave it to dry, to dry. and okay. many of us don't do that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, very wipe. good point, yeah. because yeah. as long as it's wet, we want to wipe it off. Yeah. yeah. So that's we something need that we need to... for it to kill whatever is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Another thing that we notice, especially with, uh, with just the flu, uh, someone might take that day off and then they go back to work the next day. So it's advisable for them to go to the clinic and get some time off? Yes. Yes. Okay. Visit the, especially if you know, very bad, definitely you want to visit the clinic and get those time off, mm. yeah. all right? Instead of, because most people won't want to miss two, two three days of work without a doctor paper, right? Mm -hmm. Because it might affect their um, salary or something. So definitely they might want to go back to work the following day. Yeah. Miss one day and then go back. So instead of taking that risk, then you go to the clinic, um, seek uh, medical attention, and then you have an official sick paper from a doctor that you can then forward to your work. Okay. Yeah. Cool. yeah. We also advise because some people believe the employers want them to be at work even mm -hmm. though they are sick. Yeah. And we I always tell people, um, employers, if you one person is out, why put the others at risk? By the end of the week, you might have three or four, three, four persons person. out. Yes. That's true. So it's best that you know that one person stay at home until he or she fully recovers yeah. before he go back into the workplace. Yeah. And, yeah. and for the most part, professional place spaces don't have windows, so there is no ventilation point. Yeah. Yeah. So exactly. that germs circulate right in that particular area. That's right. wow. Exactly. And that's very that's a very important point too that um, for those office or school that can open windows, yeah. it's very important for them to. Um, it would be very advisable for them to open the windows yeah. at least every so often to allow sunlight to come in yeah. because as, as Ms. Um, that also helps kill the okay. germs, right? Yeah. Okay. So sunlight is also very important. And that is why you see the flu season is normally in normally the cold, cold, in the, the, cold in the time. time. Okay. Mm -hmm. October to February yeah. to March because that's when the virus can survive. Survive yeah. much longer. Yeah. Yeah. And this new coronavirus does something even stranger, which I think scares a lot of people, which means it's transmitted even though you don't see or have any symptoms. Yes. What do, I mean, <laughs> what do we do to prevent? If John has it and looks perfectly healthy next to me, I mean, I'm not keeping my three feet distance right now. I mean, what do we do? <laughs> you see, again, it goes back to, it's, I mean, Hygiene history, yeah. the history. Okay. Because if John has not been anywhere where that virus was mm -hmm. or is, mm -hmm. then you know the possibilities of him having it. Yeah. Is. So you know, it's not just as we say, not so just having the cough, the cold. Yeah. You have to have been that at a spot where travel history or come in contact yeah. with somebody that have been where. So wash your hands like every person you meet may have it. That's what you yes. want to do. Yes. <laughs> yes. Because yes. you don't know. You don't know exactly. Yeah. Or you want to pr and practice, practice. Um, social distance. 
Okay, right? so three as, feet, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so as we mentioned, it's not I don't clear. know who you come in contact with now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you your <laughs> right? It's not clear as yet, but if it, um, surely someday we might have a yeah. PSR. Uh, so, so definitely we want to start to practice this yeah. um, hygiene practice it's and these social, yeah. these best practices from yeah. now, right? Start to get used to, you know, maybe when I meet um, a friend, instead of shaking hands, maybe just punch so or knock the elbow. Or, 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 or they're doing, no, they're doing the <laughs> kicks now. Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah. 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 I see yeah. some people yeah. also do the kicks, so okay. different things like those. Um, even if you want to rub, maybe use the back of your hand instead okay yeah so those different things that um you want to practice yeah. as just much as even well. when you just adjust see. your glasses like think of how much you adjust your glasses wow. this is actually part of the reason why masks are not advised for healthy sense, people yes. right because you touch the mask a lot yeah yeah, yeah. 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 you know the mask is i always say people mask give a false sense of security because yeah. if you don't know how to use a mask you can actually be doing more harm to yourself. Yeah, so than then, yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. Because you guys are trained differently how to how put it to on put and it how on to take, and it, take it, off. it off. Exactly. Yeah. While yes. for us, we'll just be playing just with things all off. the time. Yeah. And, and then maybe do? just touching, putting more stuff on our face. And you do see it around you because I visit a couple of schools and you see um, kids that have the mask, but the mask is on their forehead, the mask under is the under their chin. Yeah. You understand? Another friend put it on for them, Different, you know. Different thing that you see. Yeah. So it's definitely <laughs> that's the best thing, right? So yeah. instead of having oh. masks and be at school, then mm -hmm. this, it would have been best for that yeah. child to be at home. You understand? Yeah. Or that person who is working, going to work and then using masks, it's best for them to just remain at home for those couple of days until they are well. Yeah. But yeah. in general, healthy people, healthy people might make themselves them. more sick if they yeah. use exactly. it. Mm. Because exactly. we don't know how to use it properly. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So. We talked about all the different um, techniques. We got to do our hand washing exercise. So mm -hmm. this is, I, I, I'm always amazed. It's a long process. We didn't <laughs> learn this in school That's when true. we were kids. We just, they <laughs> said, wash your wash hands your before hand, you eat, it. after you eat, after you use the bathroom. That was it. Yeah. Yeah. That was it. We didn't yeah. learn this whole, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's a process. Step. It's a process. And, yes. a, and another thing about washing hands, we think that washing hand is only in the palm. Only. That just yeah. this. So we, don't, we, we don't worry about fingers. fingers. We worry yeah. only about in here. That's all we do. All right. So definitely, uh, as a matter of fact, we're about to move on to uh, the area whereby we'll be showing the proper technique of how to wash your hands. You ready? Sure. All, all right. right. Let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. Ah. So we're going to go wash our hands. Oh, you. Ah. <laughs> you stay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, so how long is this process? It says 40 to 60 seconds, and out of that, 20 seconds should be friction. 20 seconds, seconds of, of friction, friction alone. Yes, friction mm. alone. Okay. okay. Yes. So tell us the first thing that people get wrong when they wash their hands. Put this we don't soap. have a sink, but we're gonna make do, right? They uh -huh. start off by putting in the soap instead of turning on the pipe. Okay. First yes. thing you need to make sure you have clean running water. So you okay. have to make sure you turn on your pipe. Okay. So pipe first. First thing you do is turn on the pipe. Okay. And if you have jewelry on, you try to take, take those, those off. off. Take those off. Yes. Right. Yeah. So the first thing you do is turn on your pipe. Okay. I'll, I'll be your wet pipe your hand. Uh -huh. So you're gonna wet your hand. Come. No, take off jewelry. Hold yeah. on. Take off jewelry. Take off watch. Yes. All right. So here we go. The pipe is running. All right. So you want to wet your hands okay. because this will give you a better ladder when you apply the soap. Okay. Now, of course, you'll have a sink. Moist. We're yes. just, we're making yeah. do for so television. So you apply water. your soap. All right. Now you put on your soap. All right. Soap. So is there a specific way I should? No. All just right. So just apply your soap. Yes. Apply soap. Is Rub that enough? Palm to palm. Yes, rubbing your hands together to get that good ladder. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then you'll do the back of your hands. Okay. That's the base of your hands. And remember, whatever you do to one, you must do, do to, to the, the other. other. Yes. All right, so here we go. Between your fingers. Okay. Next side. Next side. Yeah. <laughs> I know you're watching. I do, yeah. Your thumb. Your thumb. thumb. How often oh, do you okay. wash your thumb yeah. when you're washing well, your hands? That's true. Uh -huh. All right, so you count, I count up to 10. Your okay. Knuckles. Yeah. Your knuckles, you're going to do that. Knuckles, okay. No, in your in palm. palm. In the palm. In the palm. In the palm. Okay, yes, all right. Yes. So you cool. wash your knuckles top here. Your nail beds. Anyone know nail have bed? That's a cupping one, yes, right? That's cup, yes. You cup like that, okay. or you do it this way. All right. And your the wrists. The other way, too. 
and the wrist. Yes. And Don't the inside of the palm. All right. So how much for that? 40 seconds? Yes. You rinse, and you always rinse with your fingers pointing down. Why, why is that? This is so that the germ go this. down the sink and it don't run up. So you don't want it to run, run back up, up on yes. your wrist. wrist. Okay. That's right. So whatever germs you just took off should run, run into down the, the sink. sink. All right. And here's another cultural practice we want to get away from. What about the hand towel in the bathroom, man? <laughs> true. Yeah, that's true. They right. spend that's lots good. of money in making sure everything matchy matchy. Yes. <laughs> but really, it's, what you need it's, is disposable paper. Paper <laughs> is ideal. <laughs> the producers like, oh my matching towels. No, no, yeah. <laughs> so you tap, style. you tap dry your hand before you turn off the sink. So you want to make sure that you tap dry and you use the paper to turn off your sink. You never. Oh, yeah. Turn the sink off with your bare hands, with the hands that you just clean. Because remember, whatever was on your hand is now on that sink when you turn it on. So okay. it's best or safer that you turn off with the paper. So we're gonna do another dry demo. Well, so here's the using other one. the sanitizer. Now this one, I gotta tell you, I'll be the first to admit. With all the COVID-19 coverage, I learned that I was using hand sanitizer wrong. wrong. Like for us, and I always have it with me. I'm always using it, but I've been using it wrong. So with the use of the sanitizer, it's basically you do the same thing with you apply the amount mm -hmm. in the palm of your hand. So first of all, I usually put too little. Like I, that's but that's enough. That's enough. Well, yes. I mean that's more than I would <laughs> normally do. So it's it's like as much soap as you would put in your hand. And uh, you rub the same way, palm so to palm. So we're gonna do palm to palm. Mm -hmm. Of Back your hand, of your hands. Between your fingers. Between your fingers. Your, fi your thumb. Oh, my thumb. Mm -hmm. See, I don't forget something already. Thumb. Your knuckles. knuckles. Your fingertips. My fingertips. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we have nails too. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yes. Imagine if you have really long nails, all the dirt on Dirt on the... Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then... And your, your wrist. And then your wrist. And remember, you never use paper tissue to dry your hands yeah. when you use a hand sanit sanitizer. You continue the process until it is, has Dries been absorbed up. into the skin completely, and then. And that was it what I was safe. doing wrong, because I usually just did kind of like the quick thing, and then I took paper and dried mm. my hands. Mm. But you actually you have to leave it to dry, dry on your yes. hands. Okay. Yes, okay. Ma now we now know. We know. <laughs> Did you use hand sanitizer like that? <laughs> Just the way you mentioned it. Uh, just put it on. And, eh, eh. Yeah. <laughs> That's the way it is. But you feel good. It's a sense, you know, in, in terms of your mind, you feel good that at least you put it on, not knowing you're just it's interrupting the process. When should we clean our hands? What, what are some How other often, times yeah. that we should be doing it? As often as possible. Mm. I mean, you're touching surfaces on a routine regularly. So yeah. as often as possible. You could use your hand sanitizer. The hand sanitizer is said to be 99.9% .9 effective. Yeah. Okay. If it's 70% or more alcohol. Yeah. Oh, okay. Alcohol. So you, so you always look make sure at the yes. content and make sure it has at least 70% 70 70 yes. alcohol. alcohol. All right. Is and it, I, I, I didn't want to go to brand, but I think uh, to make people, you know, is there a specific brand? No, just the alcohol content. Okay. Is Usually right. it's what listed is, to the back. Okay, what you alcohol have. content. Yes. All right. So you want to use 70% alcohol. Um, you know, we were talking. So let's say I have an elderly person at home and I also have kids at home. What can I do? Because the kids, we don't want them to get it, but they'll be able to fight right. it off better than maybe grandma at home. Yeah. What can you do, like like regular practices, to ensure that your your loved one at home, especially the elderly, we're talking, what age? Seventy. Se yeah. Seventy and older. Mm -hmm. Are sixty and older. Sixty and older. Yeah. 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 Are really protected. So what can we do? It's as like as say, soon as you get home, you wash your hands. Wash hands as much as possible. Clean your surfaces. Okay. Clean your surfaces with, as I say, Clorox. You could, a, a gallon of Clorox could give you a hundred gallon of mixtures, and that is what we use in the clinic setting. Okay. Oh, okay. So, you, I mean, it's like, for measurement's sake, it's a, a gallon of water mm -hmm. to quarter cup of Clorox, and okay. that, that could, you know, just take a it's little bit and that and disinfect the surfaces as Leave as until dry. As, yes. Do not wipe, wipe off. off. <laughs> okay. 
cool. And so as often as possible, wash your hands. Just about every time. Remember, if you use the bathroom, so you have to perform hand wash with soap and water and not a yeah. sanitizer. Okay. Okay, that's yes. good to know. Yeah, yes. to yes. remind people, yes. I should say. Mm -hmm. um, and even if maybe you're not going to eat or you didn't use the bathroom, you just want to wash it periodically because yes, you come in yeah. contact with different surfaces. Surfaces, yes. Okay. All right. All right. So now we know. Another alarming thing for me, once again, that I'd like for us to mention that the coronavirus has always been around, yes. just that there are different this strains strain of it. New. Now we've got COVID-19. We've got a new, new coronavirus. Strain. coronavirus. Yes. A new strain. Mm -hmm. That right. causes COVID-19. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. And up to this date this morning, we, we have no, no confirmed cases. No confirmed cases in country. But okay. what we want, and there continues to be screening Sco yes. at the port of entry. All ports of entry, yes. Mm -hmm. The clinics, they also have a protocol as to what to do if someone comes yes, in? Yes, yes, we do. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, so this is just what we want people to get used to doing. So when and if a case is detected in the country, we reduce our risk. Risk, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. And this is basically the way to reduce the risk. Make sure we perform our hand hygiene, the cough etiquette, mm -hmm. the surface cleaning. Once we do those things yeah. we could minimize and the kids should also be told no not touch. to share their share, stuff yes. either because you know wow. you got a nice yes. ideal and yes. i want to try it or a nice yes. lollipop yeah, yes. yeah. i mean the kids you, you yeah. gotta tell them yeah, yeah. yeah. and wow. that's a good thing that the fact that this virus doesn't affect the kids cycle like, oh, because you imagine if it Thank had you. kids the kids oh my yeah. goodness what that's true be, yeah. and another thing is that there are a lot of Belizeans who go and do business in our neighboring countries uh, yeah. do, do we what's going on in our other countries Mexico I know that they've uh, they they've got a case, case or two there. they have a couple is cases. there any in Guatemala none uh, detected not, as not yet none detected as yet yeah all right so money now we know. what mm -hmm. about money again sanitize yeah after touching after money touching sanitize because money especially, especially yeah. a lot of yeah that's the highest spreader. He goes around everywhere. So the main forms of transmission that we know so far seems to be person to Contact. person. Okay. You give me your yeah, germs, whether I, you cough on me or mm -hmm. I touch, touch your a surface, surface okay. right or after. touch you. Mm -hmm. That's how the main, main transmission, transmission is. Goes. Okay. All right. So now you know. Any other information? Have you had uh, any, any questions or frequently asked questions yeah. when you go out to do your education? Basically, the mass. That's what everybody wants. Everybody. everybody wants a mask, and we keep on telling them only the sick should use should a mask, mask because the mask is to prevent what you have from coming out okay. mm -hmm. into the community. So only the sick should be wearing a mask. Okay. Okay. Yes. All, All right. right. And any other frequently asked questions that you get that you'd like to tell us this morning? Um, I think what I do with uh, I just like to add in is that it's very important for people to try to get the right information okay. and to visit Ministry of Health um, Facebook page. Okay. Um, or we also um, bring out press release from the Ministry yes. of Health, okay. from the Director of Health Service. Um, they can also visit um, PAHO or World Health Organization yeah. Facebook page for updated information before, yeah. before sharing um, those fake news. Yeah. People receive them yeah. and then they keep forwarding. Oh, yeah, I got one panic, yesterday right? about mm. drinking, drinking garlic and water to cure COVID 19. Yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. I, 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 yeah, and, and we'll join you in your opinion. That's why we did this this morning yeah. to really just take some time to discuss what we can all do as of now, even with known cases, to prevent. Uh, the spread of infectious mm -hmm. diseases and uh, learn how to do so properly. Just find the right sources for your information before you share them. All and, right. Um, lastly, Ministry of Health has a, a 0800 number. Okay. Yeah. You know, if you have any concerns or maybe you have a neighbor and you believe that that person is showing some symptoms and you want, you know, us to check them out. Yeah. It's um, 0800 MOH CARE. CARE. Yes, 0800 MOH CARE. care. Uh, that is just Monday to Friday, 8 to 5, okay. for right now. Okay. I think they're trying to, you know, but right now it's just Monday to Friday, 8 All right. to 5. Fairly easy. Thank you guys so much for Thank coming you. in. I now know how to properly use hand sanitizer. sanitizer. And how to properly wash our hands. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much. We're going to go ahead now and take a break. And since we spoke about clean running water, we can really emphasize that in the next segment as yep. we talk about World Water Day. So please stay tuned.
65 years ago.
And welcome back to Open Your Eyes. We're about to venture off now into our second segment for the morning, World Water Day Committee and uh, World Water, Water Day Activities. And this year they're celebrating under the team Water and Climate Change. Actually, that, that's the team, right? Yes. Yeah. On, the 22nd to the 20, on the 22nd of March. In to tell us more about it, Dr. Lennox Gladden, Chief Climate Change Officer at the National Climate Change Office. We also have uh, Rudolph Williams all the way uh, to my right. Uh, Rudolph Williams, who is the Director of Water and Wastewater at PUC, and uh, Jeannie Neal, Public Relations for Rural Development. I think I got your name, I get it wrong? Oh my goodness. <laughs> but guys, welcome and good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> you know, uh, the, the most essential element of life, yes. water. Water. Um, and you know, a lot of people, we, we take it for granted because to us here at home in Belize, we've got it in abundance. We see a lot of rainfall, especially down the PG. But it's very important for us to know how to use our water. So let's jump on into it and uh, the importance of water, guys, please. Well, to begin with, um, the International World Water Day was adopted uh, 27 years ago. Mm -hmm. And it was um, through the United Nations General Assembly. And it was declared on March 22nd. Mm. Yeah. So that's the day that we celebrate World Water Day. Okay. This year we'll be celebrating with the fair on March 20th mm -hmm. because March 22nd is a, is a Sunday. Mm. Okay. Yes. So that's, that's, so that's the, next Friday. That's next week, Friday. Yeah. So that's the overall um, yeah. of World Water Day and how it was declared some history back in 1992. Oh, wow. Uh, we started to celebrate World Water Day in the late 1990s through the National Hydrologic Services. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, we've been collaborating with different organizations, such as Ministry of Health, Ministry of um, Rural Development, Department of the Environment, Public Utilities Commission, um, National Climate Change, we have um, Belize Electric Company Limited, mm -hmm. yeah. a University of Belize, and uh, Crystal. Yeah. Okay. Yes. You know what's interesting? I think that a lot of times we don't realize the amount of waterworks <laughs> that takes place in the country. And I don't mean crying, I mean just the amount of people who are working on uh, testing water, checking water. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's a there's a water quality unit at the Ministry of Health. Yeah. I know there's there's research done in our rivers. Definitely, Beco when you're looking at the dams. Um, talk to us, and maybe uh, Rudy, you can share some um, information there of the amount of monitoring that's taking place on our water systems throughout the country. Well, the uh, monitoring in Belize uh, is very uh, extensive. We have a lot of rivers that are partially monitored. The Belize River is the most monitored one. Okay. Um, we, we have uh, the hydrology service that uh, leads the monitoring, mm -hmm. and the Ministry of Health does some environmental monitoring, along with the Department of Environment. Yeah. We, we have been doing uh, monitoring for water quantity, and that started way back in 1969. A quantity? Yeah, the okay. amount of water that is in the uh, rivers mm -hmm. in okay. Belize, right? Mm -hmm. And um, we have it in as far south as uh, Blue Creek, in, mm -hmm. in, in Toledo, Toledo yeah. and as far north as Rio Hondo, right? Yeah. And like I said, um, the most of the, the monitoring is in the uh, Belize River. In yeah. the right? river. Um, yeah. Water quality is monitored by, like you said, the Ministry of Health and, yeah. the, and the Environment. Water quality has very um, uh, reduced compared to water quantity monitoring. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we also have a lot of groundwater and water that we have not been um, monitoring properly, okay. but we have been using it extensively. And so that's a threat that we have um, where water quality and water quantity is concerned. And when you say, uh, are you talking wells? Is yes, yes, okay. well water, right? Okay. Well, yeah. well, groundwater and aquifer water, <laughs> yeah. basically we know it in Belize as well water. Okay, okay. I'm yeah. yeah. So, so if, I, if I have a well, you know, is there someone who comes and checks it or? <sighs> That's a ticky subject. Um, yes, indeed. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there is a law that says that uh, you should not have a well without a permit. Okay. okay. Uh, mm -hmm. You should not be taking out water from the river or the um, groundwater without a permit. Okay. But that law is in kind of a little abeyance right now. Mm. Okay. Um, we have always been practicing um, just drilling well when we want to drill it, where we want to drill it, yeah. without the understanding the threats that we provide to the groundwater resources. Mm. Mm. Right. And uh, one of the threats we have is that 
whenever a well goes dry or become unusable, you know how we close it up? Garbage. Put garbage. Huh? Oh. Yeah. And then that garbage eventually seeps into the groundwater yeah. oh. and it spreads throughout the network, right? Yeah. So um, there is a real need for us to, to, to deal with our groundwater seriously. Mm. So yeah. what would be the proper way for those who have got what would be the proper way to, to close well? A, a, a well, well that runs Well, dry. there are several ways to do it. Um, the, one of the most uh, effective and expensive ways is just to throw some bentonite mm -hmm. into it and seal it off, right? Mm. Um, normally Which you is clay, right? Yes. Uh, yeah, That's exactly. clay. Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, we could put ordinary um, basic clay, co cover it up, mm -hmm. right? And uh, seal it off and do not throw garbage in the well. Do yeah. not throw garbage in that well. Because yeah. the same way the water came in, right. the, the garbage can go out. Yeah. yeah. So you said that we monitor water quantity for yeah. so many years? Yes, yes. Uh, we monitor the, um, the rivers. We, we, we have, uh, well, the hydrology service has yeah. a set of gauges on uh, most of the rivers in Belize. Mm -hmm. I, think, um, I think only the Sarstoon is, is not monitored. Right. And uh, well, how are we doing? Are we at the same rate? Are there any major fluctuations yeah. that have taken place over the years? Well, the, the, the level of uh, reporting is like twice a day and uh, that focus into uh, climatic um, quantification of mm -hmm. the water in the rivers. Yeah. If you want to go to uh, flooding, um, then you need to have more real-time information so you could respond uh, accurately and timely, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the water levels have been um, uh, being put into reports um, by the hydrology service. We have a lot of reports on that. Mm -hmm. um, we have been uh, putting out uh, advice to, for engineering projects, mm -hmm. uh, many of the road projects, the bridges and that type of stuff, they yeah. use that information, right? Yeah. Well, you know, and, and I, wanted to, I wanted to venture off right in that, right in that corner and come to uh, Dr. Gladden. Um, you know, municipalities are striking up in uh, all corners of our country. Mm -hmm. We're building a lot of roads. We're doing a lot of things. So we know that the country is developing. Mm -hmm. And a developed country, of course, is, a, is a, one of the main factors of climate change. Right. So I wanted to know, in terms of climate change and our waterways, are we losing it? What, what does this say about our waterways? Well, when you look at, the, like you, you spoke to development, mm. and we try our best to promote as an office, as a ministry, mm -hmm. sustainable development. Right? When it comes to what you, what you mentioned before, the loss of waterways and goes right back to what um, Mr. Williams mentioned mm -hmm. that we try our best to look at monitoring because there's a there's a challenge and I always say this thing it's difficult to manage what you've never measured right there are there are always this claim that there's a abundance of water within the country yeah. <laughs> we've captured it surface right. but we know that underground water mm -hmm sometimes for in most cases is is of higher quality yeah right wow yeah, so it might not it's less expensive when you do purification sure. filtration because again yeah. the, the, the quality but yeah when you look at some of these infrastructure projects mm -hmm. and now it's not only in belize it's regionally as well they are held to a higher standard because they're looking at the impact as a result of the changing climate mm -hmm. and so far, the, some of the projects that you've seen, a lot of the road projects, yeah. they aspire to be as resilient as possible. Mm -hmm. Resilience looking at, of course, try, trying as best as possible not to cause some sort of disruption to the natural waterway. Mm. If you cause a disruption to the natural waterway, then of course you can build the most, what you consider resilient road. However, it will still suffer from flooding yeah, yeah. because you're yeah. disrupting the natural the waterway. 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 Yeah. Right. So, yeah. you know, your, your theme this year is looking at climate change. Yes. And I think that uh, it's, it's very fresh on our memory. Uh, last year's yes. issues with the new mm. river, which many say has been a long time coming, but we really had a battle last year. We know that. Uh, we talk of climate change as something futuristic, something we'll see in the future, yeah. but we're seeing effects today. Mm -hmm. yeah. The warming of, of the globe. Mm -hmm. We're talking about changing in weather patterns. Uh, so less, so, I mean, we're in March, where's the wind? Uh, or when cold front season comes, it's, it's hot. Um, so we, we anecdotally have these little experiences of what we're used to and they're changing. How does this impact or water supply in the country? What are we seeing now? And what are the predictions for the future that we must start to mitigate? 
Anybody? Well, well, where uh, climate change is concerned, uh, we have, as you mentioned,